Hello everyone. Welcome to Common Touch of Fantasy. We are live. This is show number two. This is January 9th, 2017. If you're in the chat, please say hello. Uh, say hi. And talk about what you are reading. And um, I will ask before each section for everyone to put what they are reading or what they consumed during the week. And then I will flip to the chat and see what everyone says. So I'm going to be talking about my book reviews and what I'm reading and then go to the chat and see what everyone else is reading. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching this on the, uh, the VOD, the recording, thank you for taking the time to watch this and supporting my channel and supporting me. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Thank you for joining. It's awesome. I appreciate it. Okay, well, let's start right away. Um, put in the chat box what you read last week, if it was something really good, and put maybe like a, a sentence review. And I'm now going to talk about what I read last week. So guys and ladies, I finished Malazan, Book of the Fallen, 10 books, a thousand pages for each book. I finished. Celebrate. Celebrate good times. Come on. Oh yeah. I'm so excited about excited about finally finishing this series. And I finished it up with a crippled god, which I ended up loving. Uh, I give it a four stars. So the crippled god, like most of the other Malazan books, has these amazing scenes of gods and ascendants with these massive abilities and powers interacting with a group of characters in the military that we have all grown to love during the entire series. The strength of this book is that you are never really sure how everything is going to happen, how it's going to resolve itself or end up. Because of that, the tension lasts throughout the entire book. And I was very satisfied with how the series wrapped up. Uh, even though there were some slow moments in this uh, story, in this book, after reading so many of the other Malazan books about our characters walking through deserts, I kind of just got tired of people walking through deserts. I wanted them to walk through a forest or maybe like a nice grassy plain. Uh, do I recommend this series? I do, but you have to really love epic fantasy. You have to love these huge epic series with uh, tons of books. And um, if you don't really like the first book, Gardens of the Moon, you probably won't like the series. But I think that Dead House Gates, the second book in this series, is more indicative of what the whole series is like. So maybe give Gardens of the Moon and, and uh, Dead House Gates a try. Uh, if you like books that focus mostly on world building, give this book a chance. The series does get a little wordy and very philosophical towards the end of the series. Uh, the highlight of the series is between books two and six. So even though some of the end books are good, they're not spectacularly good. But I did like this last one. I give it a four. Really happy. And I also uh, reread... Um, the Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I dual-wielded this. I read this physically and on audiobook. And I wanted to read this again because I am starting The Obelisk Gate soon. Uh, this is a great adult fantasy book. And a lot of people talk about this book a lot the last year. And that's for a reason. It is a, just a really good book. And even though it's a little dense as far as the world and things... It's very easy to read. The uh, spacing between the lines of text is it's pretty big, and it's not a difficult book to read, I don't think. Um, the strength of the story is the revelations that occur at the end of the book, where the three narratives of the three different uh, women come together, and uh, you see connections between all the different stories, and the, the plot lines come together towards the end. And it just is very exciting. 
Uh, picking up the small details of this story was really good. Rereading it, I was very happy. A lot of the things I missed in like the middle half or maybe the three fifths way through the book, uh, I was very happy to pick up. And I'm really excited about reading The Obelisk Gate. So those are the two books that I finished last week. Let's go to the chat and see what you guys have read. Oh, hi, Toddy. So Stephanie and Toddy is joining. Uh, Toddy is reading a Sherlock short story from Winx Read Along. Yes, Winx is doing a like a cool Sherlock themed month, which is really cool. Uh, Stephanie is reading Mothers by Britt Bennett, and it was great. Awesome. And Toddy also finished Valor by John Gwynn. Giant Days Volume 3. Giant Days. Woo! I love Giant Days. It's so much fun. Uh, Postal Injection. Labyrinth Lost. Did you like Labyrinth Lost, Toddy? And thank you for uh, the congrats on Conquering Malzahn. <laughs> All right. What am I going to be reading this week? Well, I'm starting The Obelisk Gate. I'm jumping right into book two of N.K. Jemisin's uh, fantasy opus, I guess you, it would be now, because I think it's going to be better than her previous trilogies and series. So I'm looking forward to finding out what happens to our characters and seeing how uh, N.K. Jemisin writes the book now that a lot of the answers in the first book were kind of answered <laughs> but there there are a lot of questions too so i'm looking forward to reading this and it's just such, such a beautiful book orbit puts puts out the most beautiful books and once again look at that line spacing it's beautiful i love it beautiful line spacing it makes reading so much easier and then I am dual wielding this Raman Hob book. This is Dragon Keeper, uh, Volume One of the Rain Wilds Chronicles. This is Book Ten in Raman Hob's series, The Realm of the Elderlings. I'm listening to this on audiobook and also reading it in physical form. So hopefully, uh, I'll like these two books uh, this coming week. Those are my main reads for this coming week. What are you guys reading uh, this coming week? Let me know in the comments or in chat. Let's check out chat again. Uh, Toddy says that The Labyrinth Lost was good but predictable once I realized that the author made her own pantheon. But still good. Cool. I've seen a lot of people read that this last year. Oh, yeah. Stephanie Robin Hobb is is good. Robin Hobb is awesome. She she is my friend. <laughs> All right, let's hype up a new release. Something that's being released um, tomorrow. If something is being released soon that you're really excited about, let me know in the comments or in the chat. So my hype new release this week is going to be the Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This just sounds like a, a great whimsical fairy tale, uh, Eastern European fairy tale, kinda in the vein of Uprooted a little bit. Check out the cool cover. Very pretty. So let's look at the, uh, the synopsis here. Uh, at the edge of the Russian wilderness, winter lasts most of the year and the snowdrifts grow taller than houses. But Vasilia doesn't mind. She spends the winter nights huddled around the embers of fire with her beloved siblings, listening to her nurse's fairy tales. Above all, she loves the chilling story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon, who appears in a frigid night to calm unwary souls. So he's a good guy. Wise Russians fear him. Her nurse says the honor and honor the spirits of the house and yard and forests that protect their homes from evil. After Vasilia says, that's a tough first name to, to say, mother dies. Her father goes to Mexico. That's definitely Moscow. And it brings up a new wife. Fiercely devout, city bred, Vasilia's 
The new stepmother forbids her family from honoring the household spirits. The family acquiescence, but Facilla is frightened, sensing that more hinges upon their ritual than anyone knows. Ooh, so it's like a stepmother, evil stepmother type thing, kind of. Crops fail, evil creatures of the forest creep near, and misfortune stalks the village. Ooh. All the while, Vasilia's uh, stepmother grows ever harsher in her determination to groom her rebellious stepdaughter for either marriage or confinement in a covenant. Not cool. As danger circles, Vasilia must defy even the people she loves and call on dangerous gifts she has long concealed. Magic, probably. This, in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most terrifying tales. Very cool. Awesome. I really want to read this. Let's check out chat, see what everyone else is reading or wants to read. Taddy wants to read it too. Thomas and Bree, yeah. I saw that Bree had a copy. I didn't know Thomas did too. I think Bree might be reading it um, right now actually. It's pretty cool. I, I think it's going to be one of those great uh, fairy tale type things that people are going to love this year. Uh, moving on, I did not go to the library this week. I did not borrow anything, but guys, I bought stuff. This is the first time I bought stuff since uh, Christmas, before Christmas, but you got to hear this deal that I got on these graphic novels. Amazing deal. If you got something new that you're excited about, let me know in the comments or in the chat. So here we go. I got six graphic novels. And surprisingly, five of them are from Marvel. I'm mostly a DC guy, but I got quite a few Marvel ones. So let's go through these. I got the, the, the only DC one I got was Batman Volume 9 Bloom. This is by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. I love this run of Batman so much. And I had to get the ninth one. Simple as that. Darth Vader uh, Volume 4. This just came out, End of Games, and I think this finishes off the Darth Vader ones. I think this goes up to issue 25. Yep. And so, looking forward to reading this. I have to catch up and read a bunch of the other ones as well. But I have read some, and I do like the Star Wars Marvel comics. I got Vision, uh, Volume 1. I actually read this last year, and I loved it. Very good. Very, uh disturbing actually and it's about a family of robots and they're living in suburbia and then vision volume two and this was sold out for so long but finally it came back in looking forward to reading those and rereading vision one i got the unbeatable squirrel girl volume one so excited to finally try squirrel girl and see what all the fuss is about it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's like really cartoony looking uh, graphics. And it's just supposed to be a lot of wholesome fun. And then Miss Marvel uh, Volume 1. I read the first issue of this and I really liked it. And so I got the first volume. And I'm very excited for that. So I just want to I just want to say the deal that I got on all these I ended up, because I bought a bunch of gift cards before Christmas, and they gave you a $10 free gift card when you bought a certain amount of gift cards, plus the, uh, the buy two, get one free, plus the 15% off discount on Barnes & Noble. I got all three of these, and over, I mean, these would probably be over $100 if I bought them all regular price. I got all these for $15. 15 bucks because I had a bunch of free $10 cards and uh, a bunch of coupons and stuff. Yeah, I was excited about that. All right, let's go to the chat. Let's see if anyone bought anything. Uh, Stephanie got Lock and Key Volume 4. Read it first, and I'm itching to finish that series. I don't remember if you've read it. I have not. I am on hold for Volume 1 at the library. I've been on hold since probably July. 
I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, 15 bucks because every year what I do is I I buy a bunch of Barnes & Noble gift cards uh, and my family does for Christmas presents as well. And during the holidays, they have a buy uh, a certain amount and then you get a $10 free gift card. So I was able to have $30 in free gift cards that they just gave to me because I bought gift cards. And I was able to use that plus the $15. So it was like $45 for all these. Um, $45 for all these. Plus with the coupons and stuff, it brought it down to $45. So yeah. Oh, Toddy got Lumberjanes Volume 5. Cool. Okay, let's talk about the short story that I read that I liked the most. And I have not been dragging this thing up. I don't know if that's going to work. Okay. Short story that I liked the most this last week was Monster Girls Don't Cry by A. Merck Rustad. By A. Merck Rustad. This is from Uncanny. Uh, the issue that just came out. In the description box below, there will be a link to this story if you want to read it and I highly recommend it and I highly recommend a subscription to Uncanny as well because it's fantastic uh, this is issue 14 and Monster Girls Don't Cry by A. Merck Rustad is my short story of the week and can be found online like I said um, this story is all about accepting yourself for who you are one sister is a monster with huge large claws and pointy teeth but she loves who she is, and she is all right waiting for um, a monster girlfriend later on. The other sister has horns and wings, but she files and cuts them down so that she can pass in the real world because she is ashamed of being this monster girl. This is such a well-written short story that is easy to read and very captivating. The LGBT plus influences and thematic elements makes the story so much more than a short story and can be applied to real life. I highly recommend this one. I give it a four out of five. It was such a good story. Uh, Monster Girls Don't Cry by A. Merck Rustad. Just a fantastic uh, short story. Stephanie says, I commented on your last video with the short story I loved with a link to it. I was going to check it out, but I was a little busy putting this stuff together today. Um, I'm going to have to check it out. The Bees by Dan Cheon. I have to check it out. But maybe I'll read that tomorrow. I try to read one short story in the morning. Um, maybe I'll check that one out tomorrow. All right, podcast. What did I like for podcasts this last week? I like to listen to podcasts while I do work, uh, while I clean and do things like that. Also, audiobooks. <laughs> it is from Galactic Suburbia. Uh, these are three women from Australia that talks about feminist issues, but also talks about science fiction and fantasy. And their most recent uh, podcast, number 158, was amazing it's basically uh, a sum up of their year in 2016 they don't just talk about the culture that they consumed they talk about what happened in their lives during the year and how they got through it and that personal touch during this podcast is what I really loved about it uh, they are those three girls those three women are amazing they are very knowledgeable about everything science fiction and fantasy and they have just um, a great attitude about most things i uh, highly recommend galactic suburbia it's a great podcast check out episode 158 the link is in the description box below and also you can find it on um, multiple different podcast apps and stuff like that so yeah i try to listen to that like every every time it comes out all right, comic book. What comic book did I read this week in love? Uh, that is Champions, issue number three. Um, I gave this a five. What's so great about Champions, 
Ooh, okay. Uh, Mark Wade is writing it. He's a decent writer. Some people really don't care for him, but I like him. What's great about this is that it takes real world issues and they're trying to fix real world issues. Um, it's very vibrant. And the one character, Vivian, which is from um, Vision, the young girl that's in Vision, she is able to uh, look at the hashtags that people use on like their social media. And when they say like champions, hashtag champions, uh, she can know what's going on in the world. So they find out that a bunch of women are being pro are being um, uh, hurt against in a Middle Eastern country. And the women just want to read. They just want to go to school like all the other women and all the other in the men as well. And, but the military and the men in the village are trying to go against them. So the champions are out there and they're actually helping this real world situation and this, and they stand up against the military and with the normal women as well behind them, they help um, make a stand for equality. And it's such, it's so good. It's so good. I like this focus on real world issues. Um, Champions issue number three. Maybe check out the first volume when it comes out if you like to buy the trades, or you can check it out in your local comic book store and get issue number three. Really cool. Uh, I really enjoy it. All right, let's move on. I did not watch any movies this last week, uh, but I did watch TV. I watched the final season of Mad Men. Um, season seven, I watched the second half of it. Let me know in the chat or comments below uh, what you read, or sorry, what you watched on TV. Mad Men, final thoughts. Great show that got progressively worse towards the end. I think the the top of the show was around season two through five and it's just it's very different than other shows it's not a very like a a fictional narrative that is normal it's basically a real life thing with a lot of randomness that happens and it's kind of like real life in that regards and so I wanted like something really bad to happen to the main character, John Hamm's character, because his character is awful. He's an adulteress. He is an alcoholic and he doesn't treat people all that great. And, but he does kind of fall down like this rabbit hole of substance abuse and things like that, where his life kind of gets turned upside down and things like that. But it never really shows like the the total descent of his character to to like the degree that I really wanted it to. And what I wanted this show to do, I wanted this show to switch from a man focused show to the female focused show, where it had um, Peggy and the redhead lady that I can't think of her name right now. Um, have them the focus of the show. I wanted them to take over the show and show the progression from the mid sixties to the early seventies and how things were changing. I got that somewhat, but I wanted more, but it was a great journey. I did love watching it. Um, the last season was up and down, but the last four, five, five or four episodes, they were really good. All right, let's go to the chat. Let's see what we have to say here. Uh, Stephanie, I still haven't finished Mad Men. Yes, that was my whole thing. I had one season left. Uh, in fact, I watched the first half of that season and never watched the other one. I started a show called Crazy Head. It's a girl who works in a bowling alley and fights demons. Really? It's UK, so there's only six episodes, but it's a riot. That sounds hilarious. Oh, that's so cool. 
I'm gonna write that down real quick. <laughs> Crazy head. All right. I like it. All right, moving on here. Documentaries. What did I watch for my Saturday documentary? My Docu Saturday? Well, I uh, actually watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Crash Course, which is a really popular YouTube channel hosted by John Green. He puts out crash courses for a bunch of different um, subjects. And so I watched a lot of the world history crash courses. I went on the con uh, academy.org website and they have this great way to watch it as well so I, I put that in the description box below I highly recommend this it's so cool so it starts out with um, like the agricultural revolution in this valley it talks about ancient Mesopotamia Egypt and then it just goes into like the Greeks the Persians Buddha um, Chinese history Silk Road uh, Roman Empire, Christianity, Islam, fall of the Roman Empire, Dark Ages, Crusades, and um, Islam in Africa, and things focusing on Africa. Uh, what is so cool about this, and what I loved, is that it's a very progressive view of history, and that is why I liked it so much. I have a history degree myself, but my history degree is very Eurocentric. And so it's very good to watch these things about um, like India, about China, about Africa, about the Silk Road and how everything kind of flowed together and everything influenced each other. And it was so good. Each one of these videos is about 10, 12 minutes. And um, it's really great. But uh it's Crash Course. You can find it on YouTube. And you can also find it at this Khan Academy website with John Green. And it was great. I spent like three hours watching this the other night. It was so much fun. All right, let's go to chat. Let's see what we have to say. Oh, the live feed keeps cutting out. That's not good. Well, I'll look at I'll look into that for next week. <laughs> you might be too lazy to do it, but it sounds great. It's really cool. Uh, I think the best decision I made for this new year is having a night dedicated to documentaries and learning, and I'm loving it. It's so much fun. All right, the last thing this week is my favorite booktube video of the week. And even though she is a huge booktuber with a ton of following, I'm going to go with uh, Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings. And she made an amazing video about her goals, TBRs, and bad reading habits. It's like her chat thing. And what's great about Mercedes is she is no fluff. She says how she feels about things. And... I really appreciate that from her. So in this, she talks about how like goals and TBRs don't really work for her and how she struggles sometimes with the books on her shelf. And she's just very open and honest about it. And you don't really see that from people that have like a 25,000 uh, uh, person following. And she's just an amazing booktuber. She really does it really well. So that is my favorite booktube video of the week. Blame Mercury. <laughs> yes. I blame Mercury too. Every time my internet mixes up. All right. Um, that is it for me tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Toddy and Stephanie, I thank you so much for joining me live. And if you watch the recorded video, Please like and comment in recorded video. I really appreciate it. It'll process and add it probably later tonight or early in the morning. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to start reading Obelisk Gate and Dragon Keeper. Looking forward to reading these this week. 
crossing my fingers and I can read both. It's going to be difficult, but we shall sh see. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll stick around and chat for a little bit as you guys catch up with the video and say thank you.